as we sat down here, uh, several of us were noting, noticing how bright the lights are on the stage. And it reminded me of a uh, line from a song, that the future's so bright you gotta wear shades. Um, and uh, so that fits in with Kevin's comments about optimism for the future. And I've been accused of being an optimist on a number of occasions. And I, I uh, freely admit it. Uh, but I think that that's the way to make progress. So without further ado, I want to share with you a few things on, uh, on the progress. And I have a lot of slides, but I'm going to try and keep it very crisp and short uh, and give you the opportunity to look at the slides in detail in the materials that you'll get after the conference. Uh, first of all, we all know why we're here, right? We signed a commitment, uh, and uh, so we're making progress. I think uh, uh, biofuels, sustainable biofuels, is a key part of that progress opportunity driven by price and availability and environmental impact, uh, it's an opportunity for us. Uh, the basic idea, just to refresh your memory, is if you're using fossil fuels, you're taking out of your savings account, spending that CO2. If you're uh, using sustainable biofuels, you're, you're use, creating some current income, so you can have more of a closed loop uh, opportunity. And um, I'm gonna talk about uh, particularly these four uh, kinds of plant oil sources, um, uh, three of which uh, we have tested in, in recent uh, uh, laboratory ground and flight trials, uh, Jatropha, algae, and camelina. And halophytes is on here because uh, it's a very promising, relatively near-term uh, kind of uh, possibility. Uh, and if you may not be familiar with that, they're, they're plants, so it's a whole class of plants that are grown in salty conditions, salt marshes or, or salty soil, if you will, uh, and has a high plant oil content. Um, and just to give you a frame of reference, uh, soy is on here as a, as a reference point uh, in terms of how much oil, plant oil, you can get uh, in gallons per acre per year. Uh, now the figures on here are best information available. Uh, will, will they be the same next year? Probably not. Uh, uh, some of them will go up, some of them will go down, uh, but this gives you a, a, an idea of what we're looking at. Now, our view is it's gonna take a variety of solutions, not just one of those. Uh, and here's a few figures on, uh, uh, on those four uh, types of uh, plant oil sources uh, uh, in terms of uh, when uh, it's generally thought that they will be ready uh, and uh, what some of the benefits and the challenges are that go along with those. Uh, so uh, algae has the highest productivity benefit potential, uh, but it's probably the furthest away from really commercial scale up potential. So a lot of work being done on that. Camelina, on the other hand, uh, is uh, ready now. And I was asked to give an update in particular about some of the, uh, uh, some of the test work that's been made uh, pretty clearly visible uh, in partnership with airlines and engine companies and, and others. Uh, so we have four flights that we've conducted in the last, I think, 57, 58 weeks. And in fact, three of those were conducted in period between December 30th and January 30th of this year. So uh, pretty accelerated pace uh, for this kind of thing. Uh, started with a 20% blend uh, from uh, plant oil sources that uh, uh, at this point don't look very commercial going forward, uh, but somebody had to go first and get it started, and uh, Virgin Atlantic was willing to step up and do that together with GE and Imperium Renewables and, and Boeing. We got that, uh, no pun intended, off the ground. And then uh, late last year, uh, we started on this series that uh, resulted in the last uh, the other three that are mentioned here with uh, Air New Zealand, Continental Airlines, and Japan Airlines, and those were all run at 50% blend in one engine uh, on, on the three different aircrafts, two 747s and a 737 aircraft were used for that. Uh, Honeywell UOP did the processing of the fuel, uh, and then the fuel was sourced uh, from uh, Terrasol, Sapphire, and Sustainable Oils, three different types of plant oil types. and so. With this whole series, what we wanted to do was to uh, go from possibility to proving feasibility. We wanted to get hands-on experience uh, with airlines around the world with uh, the four 
major engine companies serving our industry, commercial aviation industry, uh, with some different processing methods and different plant oil sources so that we got experience and uh, we got people familiar with what's possible and we, we start to understand the questions and some of the answers. Now, one of the things that we, we found was that uh, we can get a very, very high quality fuel uh, through these methods. Uh, in fact, it's possible to come out with fuel that has higher energy density and lower freeze point, which were two of the key uh, knocks against biofuel uh, when we started this out a couple of years ago. So those things can be overcome uh, in, in a rational basis. So uh, I think we've knocked down the primary technical barriers. The data from all that work is going into, and additional work, is going into a research report that will be submitted to the fuel specification committees. Uh, ASTM is illustrated here, but there's also the DEFSTAN 9191 uh, in the UK, which is another very prominent fuel standard. And the idea here is that the data report goes in, the fuel spec committee takes a look at it and says, okay, is there something else that needs to be done? or something that needs to be done differently. And uh, they will advise back uh, you know, what additional needs to be done, if anything. Uh, and then, uh, but uh, I think everyone's pretty well aligned around uh, putting this into specification form and getting approval for that in fairly short order, which, which means like by the end of next year uh, as a target. Uh, and uh, that will be really fast progress. With that, uh, this fuel can be used in the current infrastructure, with the current engines, with the current airframes. Technical capability and then the commercial viability has to be done in parallel so that we're able to scale it up. And, and there's a lot of work going on there with private parties. And then finally, we need a code of practice for sustainability. And we're gonna have another speaker talk about that. Uh, but that's another leg of this school to, uh, to make it work well. And a lot of work then to be done as far as distribution. So we have a lot of work ahead of us. I'm not so much of an optimist that I'm saying there's no work ahead of us, not that. But we can do this, okay? We fill in some gaps on commercialization and uh, bring all these, the supply chain together. So we put together supply chains for, for test work but they're one-time supply chains. They're not optimized. Uh, they're not scaled properly for commercialization. That can be done, and uh, people are working on that right now. So thank you for your time.